How you doing back there, John? Doing really well. Well, it's a good day in the neighborhood today. I'm so excited because, you know, John, I think we have a superstar on the phone. Did you see the video? He's got over 4 million hits. I saw that. It was a lot of views, man. I mean, that's tremendous. I'm, I'm, I'm jealous. I'm <laughs> I never know anything that's got that much notice. I can't even dance like that. <laughs> you want to play the clip? I can play the clip. We can play the clip. Let me uh, bring him on board. So, Mr. John Griffith, are you there? I'm there. Good morning. Good morning. Lisa. Good morning. How you doing? I know you heard my music, so you was probably popping, locking back there to that music, weren't you? You know what? I was thinking, well, I can put the guitar I dance to that intro. <laughs> <laughs> I know you did, because that's a nice intro. But I was... Well, I, I know that uh, it's one of those things that just give you a little beat, you know, a little perk. But John's going to mm -hmm. play. He's going to play your, your video and people can see it. I mean, who hasn't seen it by now? So I think you are a rock star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now let's talk about the California Conservation Corps. We talked a little bit about it. And, you know, you said it was similar to Job Corps. So... Let's talk a little bit about that and tell me what it is that you do. Okay, well, the California Conservation Corps is one of about 127 core programs in the United States. And if your listeners are interested in learning more about that, they can go to the core network at corpsnetwork.org. And there's lots and lots of opportunities for youth, 18 and 25, and older people, too. There's senior cores uh, for senior citizens. There's... Um, Corps with no age limits, but what the California Conservation Corps does is we take 18 and 25 year old California residents and we are a youth development or well, workforce training program. And so uh, where I work, uh, we have a residential facility and youth from all over California. And usually we encourage them um, to get stationed in a part of California where they didn't grow up so you get out of your neighborhood. And so a lot of, at, in Fortuna, which is in far northern California, like in the Redwood country, if you can imagine the Redwood, that's where I'm at right now. Oh, that's but beautiful. Most, yeah, beautiful. And um, most of the core members who are with me are from L.A. or from Oakland or from Compton or from San Diego or from Fresno. So those are like in southern parts of California. And so when they come up here, it's a lot of times the first time in northern California. And once, we get, once they get here, we start teaching them job skills, and then we take them out into the fields, and we build trails um, so people can have access to our state and national parks. We do ecological restoration, so like we, um, we do a lot of fish habitat restoration, and we also respond to emergencies. So if there's a major flood or natural disaster, or oil, especially, can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. And especially fires, um, which we do a lot, we respond to fires a lot. These young people, these 18 and 25-year-olds, um, are there helping out their communities, helping out Californians with, um, you know, during a time of crisis, like a fire or flood or oil spill yeah. or earthquake. Well, you know, I was going to ask you, too, about that because you guys just went through that big fire, and it's like every year half of California burns down. <laughs> So Tell me about it. your program, yeah. your program I mean, handles a lot that's of that. That's normal here. That's normal here. We have fires. Yeah. And see, that's too scary. That can't be normal. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be normal. Don't say that word. Well, you know how normal it is, Lisa. It's so normal that we have plants in California, and we have trees in California that will only their only germinate if there is a fire. Wow, that that's now that's crazy. 
So, but mm -hmm. now when things out there start to flood and everything, that's part of your program, you say restoration. So if you have, say, a community that floods out their homes and everything, that's part of what your program does, go in and, like, help clean up the mess? Oh, yes. Yeah, you would have our youth out there helping you and sandbagging your home and all that stuff. And, and all the core members get paid, and they also can earn up to $8,000 in scholarships per year. Mm -hmm. Now, have any of your group gone to other states in, in crisis like that? Because, you know, like when Hurricane Sandy and Katrina, you know, they had people from different places uh, coming in to help. Have, have any of your people gone and experienced anything like that in another state? We did. We went to, um, we went to Hurricane uh, Katrina. I didn't, but many of the CCC youth and um, staff members did go to Katrina. Oh, that was probably something that was embedded in their mind forever. Still talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible because we, uh, some of my friends went to help out at Hurricane Sandy and it was one of the things when they sent back pictures, it was stuff that just like, oh my goodness, how people live in, you know, after that, it has to be such a mental challenge afterwards to get your head straight. You know, it's like, what happened? Oh, yeah. My heart was sick and just from seeing the news, yeah. I wasn't even there, you know, it's like being there must have been, you know, from what my friends who went there told me it was heart-wrenching. Yeah, yeah. So now how did you end up in a program like that? And I know we had talked a little bit about you growing up and everything, so how did you end up in a program like this? Well, I'll keep it real for you, um, and your listeners, I was, we have a lot of the kids in our program, or excuse me, young adults, I gotta stop saying kids, the older I get, the, the younger everybody else gets. But, um, <laughs> oh, I better stand by you then. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's funny, cause when I was 20, I was a man, but now if you're 20, you're still a kid to me, so I don't know how that worked out. But anyway, um, <laughs> we have a lot of youth from distressed communities. You know, there's not a lot of opportunities, you know, and, um, and I was one of those kids, and I was one of the knuckleheaded kids. I, um, I ran away from my home when I was 15 and um, got caught up in the wrong thing mm -hmm. and dropped out of high school. What? And, um, but, yeah, and I have good parents, too. That's the thing. Is my parents are good people. Oh, you are a brat. And um, <laughs> I was a for real brat. I'm not <laughs> proud of it. And I was at the time, though. That's how you know you're a brat is when you're proud of all that stupidity. But, um, <laughs> so, but I had good enough foundation, thanks to my grandma and my mom especially, I had enough, I had a good foundation. I knew right from wrong deep down inside. And so um, my friend told me about the CCC, and it was out of the city, and I needed out of the city. Right. And so um, I joined the CCC, and I got my GED, and one of the first things I did was, um, after I got went to the training, is we went and looked for a crashed plane. And um, we didn't find the plane. Another crew found the plane, but we got there when the bodies were being recovered. And I saw the reactions of the family Oh. Um, who lost their relatives in this plane crash. And um, and it was kind of a transformative moment. I realized how important helping people were and, um, you know, how your life could be gone in a second and all that kind of stuff. And I started to grow up. And then I became a firefighter in the CCC, California Conservation Corps. And um, because of getting the little bit of education I got there and the job experience, I went on to the foresters and state parks and, you know, college. I never was... I, Never would imagine that I'd gone to college. I went to college for 10 years. Um, <laughs> I hear you. I'm still there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still paying for it. Still paying for it. Uh, that was my plan. They have so, a decade. <laughs> <laughs> the decade plan that was my plan, too, John. So. <laughs> uh, we should, that's what this interview should be about. We're the decade club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can start a whole new club. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so... The, the CCC was a transformative experience for me. And so after, you know, 13, 14 years of being away from the program, I was actually in graduate school. And um, one of my old mentors called and said, you know, it's time for you to come back and give back. And um, at the time, I was looking at my student loans piling higher and higher. And I said, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> for several reasons. And one of them being, it's time for me to, like, get out into the world and, you know, with this career thing. So I came back, and it has been as transformative from this position mm -hmm. as it was when I was a core member because I get to see youth come up, you know, youth with really low self-esteem or youth who are from places with no opportunities, 
and I get to see them accomplish wonders. And I get to see their self-esteem and their self-compassion really grow. And I get to see them become heroes. And I get to see them discover things in nature for the first time. And, you know, if you grew up in the countryside, you might take that for advantage. But when you're from a, the middle of the concrete jungle, and maybe you've never been out of your neighborhood, and you come into the woods with me and you discover a salamander, it might as well be a dinosaur as far as you're concerned. Right. And I get to watch those first-time discoveries. And so my job is very fulfilling on a ton of different levels. And it makes me want to dance, as you have seen. <laughs> <laughs> I and love it. I love it. it. It's like that, that, um, it's a really working for a core program and being with people who are trying to improve themselves and who are very goal-oriented, especially young people maybe. Well, mm -hmm. at least that's from my perspective. It is a wonderful, wonderful job. It's a wonderful thing to be part of. And you enjoy being outside, I see, because you guys are always outside dancing. We are always <laughs> outside and dancing, yeah. We, we, um, we camp out at our, some of our remote project sites, so we'll be camped out for eight days in a row. Oh, and, um, with the bear? So imagine if you just say that again. Out there with the bears and stuff? Oh, we chase bears out of our camp sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just dance them right on out of there. <laughs> well, you know, pick them up. We stop dancing. <laughs> <laughs> that's one time you stop dancing when you see the bear. <laughs> <laughs> one time. That's the only time we stop dancing when the bear <laughs> That has to be funny. I mean, and scary at the same time. <laughs> mm hmm. Oh, Especially my. when they wake you up in your tent. That's the scariest. Well, I can imagine because I've seen like I watch a lot of like Alaska wilderness wilderness and they have the bears and they see the claws and everything. And it's like uh, they could just rip the tent to shred. They'd be tipping over trucks and stuff. Oh, yeah. The tent is just a napkin. You know, that's why I saw my phone number. <laughs> I said, don't take food into your tent because the tent will become the bear's napkin. He go eat you the food and wipe his mouth with the tent. <laughs> <laughs> Love it! Oh my goodness! <laughs> so how long? How long have you been doing this, John? It's been a little over ten years now. Mm -hmm. Well, a decade and, um, down, and you don't see any time stopping doing it because I see you like to dance too much. When I watched the video of you by yourself out there, I was like, you're just having too much fun. It's not even like a day's work to you anymore. <laughs> You just want to go to work to dance. Can I just dance? Well, you know, because we spend 24 hours together, you know, because we, when we go out for this eight days at a time, mm -hmm. we're around each other 24 hours. And so we don't have a boss and employee, traditional boss and employee relationship. I'm right. their mentor. Uh-huh. Um, I'm their big brother for many of them. I'm, the, I'm their father. And oh, okay. so we don't have a traditional boss relationship. It's a program, you know. Uh -huh. So um, I can't maintain this air of I'm the boss all the time. Right. I have to make them feel safe. I have to make them feel comfortable. Some of them have some, you know, some of them are some from very abusive backgrounds. I need them to trust me. And when someone's been abused all their life, it's very difficult to get their trust. Right, right. And so one of the ways I do that is by being very accessible. Mm -hmm. So I tell them, you know, things like, you know, if there's a point in your life where you're going to make some stupid mistakes on the job, they need to happen right now in front of me because... I'm going to help you get past it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I say things like that, and I, and I teach them about self-compassion and about I really keep it on compassion. And then, and then I try to relate to them in what, you know, in a way that they're familiar. And so since a lot of the core members in our program are from urban areas, um, hip-hop, hip-hop music, urban dance styles resonates with them. Yeah. And I also yeah. grew up in the city, so I've been involved in hip-hop and dance since I can remember. So now tell me... Tell me that name you say it used to be White Boy What? <laughs> I was White Boy Fresh. <laughs> I I was a boy <laughs> white Boy Fresh, John. Can you take it? <laughs> <laughs> Still got it, man. I mean, I, I haven't seen this white video. Boy Fresh, and then I was Casper when I was rapping. <laughs> Casper, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, and so when the when the youth come up in the woods and they see me up here, and I got a cowboy hat, and I'm big and white and hairy. Yeah, they think that I was I crawled out of the volcano when I was a baby, and I've been in the mountains ever since. <laughs> Mountain man. Yeah, but then they have no idea that I grew up in the city, and I don't tell them right away. I right. don't say, "Oh, I'm from the city too." Or, oh, you're from my neighborhood. I just, I just play it, you know. I play it cool, and then when the music comes on, then I shock them. That's and it. And that's. Then they ask me the questions. Where are you really from? <laughs> 
Because the first time I saw the video, I thought it was kind of funny, too. And, and the two black guys, they was dancing. And then when they brought you in, and I'm looking at you, I was like, ooh, look at him. And then when you dropped it, I said, oh, look. <laughs> I said, he got down on him. They were so shocked when that boy grabbed you was hanging on to you. That was hilarious because they were shocked. They were like, what? <laughs> he did that thing. If I would have known that video was going viral, I would have done a better job. I was like, that was good enough to get you started. I, I was going to delete that. Mm -hmm. I had that in my hand. I, I filmed that with a real cheap little video camera, like a uh -huh. dollar video camera. But, and um, I we mean, were, actually, we just we just cleaned up for breakfast. We were in the dining hall. We were getting ready for work. So you and, had to um, dance one last time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were doing the last before work dance, and um. And, and so I got to work, and, I, and they said, let us see that video. And I showed them, and I was like, ooh, I'm deleting this. Mm, they mm -hmm. said, oh, no, you're not. I said, no one needs, they said, you need to upload that to YouTube. And I said, no one needs to see a fat white cowboy dancing. We don't need that in our society. And so, like, <laughs> our moms need to see that. And we started laughing. So I said, tell your mom that she got uh, two weeks to watch this video. And then I'm taking it down. And in that two weeks, uh, crazy things happened. I got calls from university professors. Mm. And they said, can we use your video in our class? I said, what in the world could <laughs> the topic of your class possibly be? Right. White boys and, and hip-hop. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Middle-aged guys dancing. Oh, what is the name of your class? And um, they said, it's cultural competency. Mm. And, you know, at the, at the time, I was working with Akima Price, who wrote What's Good in My Hood, it's curriculum for um, really urban kids uh -huh. like in the Bronx and stuff to learn about nature. And um, her and I, she, we were on an advisory. She was actually one of the authors of um, what became EPA's Community Environmental Education Guidelines. And I was kind of her on her advisory, advisory council. And she saw it, and she said, this is cultural competency. And so, you know, I was doing diversity trainings, trying to get the conservation movement more inclusive because it had been very white and upper middle class still is right and so we were trying to diversify it and make it more inclusive um and not so much this weird like country club kind of thing and um so when that came out she said this is the example that needs to be used for cultural competencies the professors are right um and so it went that way and so it kind of traveled through the diversity trainer crowd and got like a couple thousand hits and then um Tell me if, this, um, if I'm going on too long about this story. No, I think it's great because when I saw the 4.4 million, I was like, what? Don't they mean, is mm -hmm. that 4,000? And I said, no, that's 4 million hits. You know, oh, that's yeah, no, amazing. That's, yeah, that's just, you know, and it's been on TV so many times. It's going to be on MTV again in, on I think July 9th or 10th. Yeah. I just so, told my son that the other day. I said, we're going to have to watch him again. I said, because every time that they put it up, I just crack up because it's just it's just so funny. Those guys' mm -hmm. face, those guys' faces, when you break it down, they're just like, oh, he did uh -huh. it. <laughs> I have interviews with both of them on my YouTube, too. Um, on my YouTube channel, I have like 60-some videos, and two of the videos are, are uh, interviews with each one of those young men where they – um, talk about what they've done in the core program, and they also demonstrate their dance skills. So mm -hmm. if any of your listeners are curious, they could go look at Yeah, Total yeah. Magic. Total what, Magic going mad on YouTube. Because I saw that but, um, Total Magic. I didn't know what that was, but I watched the three videos. It's like the first one and then the one where you dance by yourself, and then I saw the Bio Blitz, and, mm -hmm. and I saw the Bio Blitz on... Um, What's his name? Uh, Ron. I looked at his site last night. Ron Finley? Or no, no um, Griswold, Griswold. Ron Griswold. Yeah, Griswold. yeah. I looked at his site last night and I saw that you were on there. So I had sent him an email, you know, saying that I had talked to you and everything. But I, it's just amazing to see that many hits. And then it's like I said, I think you like a rock star or something. You know, who gets poor <laughs> me? Hits? I mean, you know. <laughs> It's amazing where I get recognized for that. You know, if I'm in my uniform and have that hat on, the, a cowboy hat or a Stetson, sometimes I'll be at the gas station and some parents will come up and be like, will you dance with our kids? <laughs> and, yet, and it doesn't matter what mood I'm in, I have to say yes. You just have to and dance. So, um, <clears throat> but you know I'm always in a good mood afterwards. Yeah, so, yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah. I, it is amazing because, you know, people are recognized for so many negative things and now you're like, this god of dance or something 
Everybody That's wants funny. to dance with you. Mm-hmm. And just to let you know, Totem Magic, T-O-T-E-M, Magic, Going Mad is the title of my book. And my book, um, I wrote it years ago, and it was part of because I saw the conservation movement wasn't diverse enough. So I wrote about supernatural heroes, you know, like witches and wizards who protect endangered species. And the characters look like the characters in my neighborhood. In fact, they're based on people in my neighborhood. Oh, okay. That I grew up in. And then I take all the money from that and I donate it to groups. Um, right now I'm donating all the, it's not a lot of profit, you know, because I'm only selling a few books per week now. When the video went viral, I sold a lot of books, but um, like right after the initial viralness, but um, <laughs> of reality. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> but, um, the reality. Right now, donating to Conserve It Forward, which is a uh, environmental group that was started by a nine-year-old girl, and um, I've had the pleasure to meet her twice. Mm -hmm. Her family, um, she's from Florida, but in the past, I've donated to um, Outdoor Afro, and um, I talked to you a little bit about Outdoor Afro on the phone the other day. But yeah, um, Rue Map, the founder, is the one who called me the instant that that um, video was going viral, mm -hmm. and. She has been a friend and a mentor in so many different ways from that. And she, um, she's on TV sometimes, and she's um, talking about getting kids outdoors. And, and she's heard the slogan of Outdoor Afro is where black people in nature meet. And so they, it's yeah. been nationwide, and um, they, they are starting to get little chapters in all kinds of different towns. And what they do is they plan hiking trips and rafting trips. Oh, okay. But, well, um, you know, that's what, that's one thing a, a lot of the black kids may not be outside as much as the white kids, because like, say in the wintertime up here, black people be inside, <laughs> white kids be mm -hmm. outside. So mm -hmm. they, they, it would be good to have programs like that uh, and diversify like that, because th then with all the kids being overweight and everything too, they want to play the video games. It's like, put the video games down and go outside. Yeah, and you know, if you have a childhood connection to nature, you are way more likely to want to protect it when you're older, too. And yeah. with 7 billion people on the planet, we've got to take care of our air, soil, and water, you know? Yeah. So I think I love outdoor Africa, but Room Map called me when it went um, viral, and I was in trip-out mode because I was like, why in the world would people be wanting to see this? <laughs> and, um, and she said, you're going to get interviewed by Good Morning America and Today Show and Headline News and stuff like that tomorrow, so we need to help you focus. And I was like, girl, you're tripping, you know, they're calling me. And she's like, they're, you're going to be on the news tomorrow. And so I humored her, and I took her seriously because I respect her. So I was like, okay, maybe she knows something, I don't know. <laughs> and so she went over with me, and she helped me stay focused. And it was the single best phone call I ever got because the next morning, Good Morning America, Today Show, and Headline News did call. Oh, my goodness. And I was interviewed. And you were shocked. And, um, and she helped me prepare to keep it about core programs. Right. Um, and and wildlife conservation, and the good things. Like, I didn't let anybody take the conversation over to just dancing. Right, right. Um, and so she's, I've been, I, she's also the, I guess you can call the, the godmother of the bio blitz dance. And the bio blitz dance was something we did for National Geographic. National Geographic invited me to speak at one of their annual events, and I was like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. And I told my core members about it, and they're like, oh, we want to do that. Yeah. So I said, okay, here we go. <laughs> you just so everywhere. Say that again? I say you just everywhere. They have you everywhere. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So we went up there, and I was like, you know, we just can't go. You know, if you're going with me, we just can't get up there and talk. We got to bust and move because <laughs> that's who I am. I'm all about dancing. Right, right. And so we created the BioBus dance, and we made, you know, the video. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten responses from all over the world. So we've, from Africa, from Romania, from um, uh, Atlanta, Tennessee, all over the place. And um, so if you want to make a bio blitz dance video with your friends, I'd love to see that. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I think that would be hilarious. You have to do it outside. You got to do it outside. That's the one rule. Well, mm -hmm. I'm, I, John could do that. John, you hear that? We got a challenge. Yeah, but I don't know if anybody else is that limber anymore. Right? <laughs> Well, I can still pop and lock a little bit, you know. Okay, well, I just don't want to have a, you know, bring a chiropractor in, you know. I, I don't want to slip a disc. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, my back, and they'll think that's a move. See, that's all you got to do. You got to walk it out, you know. They'll think it's a move, and they'll be like, look at Lisa go. Sh and, shuffle out to physical therapy. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, look at Lisa go. I'll be like, straight to the hospital. <laughs>
<laughs> but I, I think that's a good challenge, John. We gotta get us a crew. We gotta have to do a bio blitz of Flint. I'll get right on that. Yeah, all, the, yeah. all, the, all the people, all the hosts down here. I'll see if I get one of them to actually bust the move. Here. Yeah, we'll see if we can get some people mm -hmm. to do that. <laughs> but now, how many people do you work with your group like on a normal day? Because it seems like in the bio blitz, you got a few guys, but you said y'all camping, so I figure you must have you know a nice little crew. Yeah, I, I'm a crew supervisor, so I have usually 15 core members with me at a time. Mm -hmm. now, um, are these all guys, or you have a mixed crew? A very mixed. Like right now, um, I actually just transferred from from one CCU station to another. And right now, I have the most women I've ever had. Mm -hmm. So almost half my crew is female, a third of my crew is female. Oh, well, then they're tough. Um, so it's more mixed, you know, and my, um, my crew leaders are female, and so it's a real interesting um, dynamic as far as uh, we don't usually have that many women per crew, and <clears throat> I wish more women would join core programs. Yeah. Well, but, um, maybe they think so it's far, hard work. Maybe it's too hard yeah. work. It, I think it's part of that. I also think that a lot more women go to college. Uh huh. And so after high school, and so, you know, what's left over is mostly guys. That's part of it. And then. It doesn't look, I think a lot of um, women see the pictures and stuff, and it doesn't look like there's women in there, so they yeah. don't maybe understand that it's a, an option. I don't know. Yeah, because when all, all I see are the guys, but, you know, maybe maybe it's the uniform, too. Y'all need to jazz up the women's uniform or something. We're in the, we're in the process of that right now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, See, good idea. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't have to wear them ugly pants, and they be like, "Oh, those pants are too ugly. I can't wear those." You know, the little hiking <laughs> boots. You know, <laughs> but because when you guys clear paths now, you you got tools and stuff. You know, right? You you got to handle chainsaws and different things like that when you're building oh, yeah. a hiking trail. See, now I like my tools. I'm one of those. You go in my garage. I got power tools galore. But some mm -hmm. people are afraid of them, and, you know, they may just not want to do it. Maybe they think it's a little too manly. So maybe you guys well, need our, to work on that. Yeah, our <laughs> motto is actually hard work, low pay, and miserable conditions. Oh, yeah, that'll more. scare me. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is, I, it, what? What? It's true. <laughs> That's what I'd be yeah, like. It, you, is, mm. it is so true. Like, um whenever you leave your house and it's raining and snowing and you think, oh, thank goodness I don't have to work outside, oh, then you'll drive by us. And you have to work outside. outside, yeah. Yeah. Well, it has to be something that people really enjoy because, like you say, when, when the weather changes, sometimes it's like, I, I worked in the office forever and I didn't want to go when it's snowing and stuff because I got to get out there, I got to drive my car through all that slush, I got to fight with people on the road. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of them things you have to be fit for. And, and I'm not an outdoors person. I like to fish but because I'm a farm girl. I'm a country girl by heart. Mm -hmm. But all that other stuff, you know, shoveling through through the snow and and fighting fires, I think that's a little bit much for me. <laughs> yeah, you know, and most core members spend a year or two doing it and then end up going to college and working in the office. Some, some, and a big percentage actually become firefighters or mm -hmm. in natural resource fields. I have the opposite thing. I um, I can't spend too much time sitting down. I think if I had been born in the nineties, they'd have told me I had ADHD or yeah, ADHD or. They might have said that I had elemental because I got a bad. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so I have to, <laughs> I have to be outside moving around. And it's you know, as soon as I sit down, I get tired and bored. And so yeah. and that's why I never did well in school as a kid. Yeah. But, um, I did well in college though because the classes were shorter and you got to get up and go to another classroom. Yeah. So this is a perfect trip for me. I love the you know just the diversity of workplaces because you know we work someplace different every week mm -hmm. you know, so we'll be on this mountain one week we'll be in the bottom of that you know valley the next we'll be on the beach the next week and then you know the core members change out every year because they come for a year mm -hmm. and so and they don't come at the same time so i always have someone graduating out of the program and someone entering the program at the same time so i always have a new person on my crew and um and that makes it real you know it's, it keeps me very much engaged you know and then 
I, I won't lie to you, when it's when it's blowing 45 miles per hour and the wind is sideways in my face, I think, why couldn't I just have been an officer? <laughs> and I know. I would be thinking that when that fire come nipping up on my heels. <laughs> like, why couldn't I have been in an office? Why I got to be uh, out here in this raging fire? Trust me, I have thought that. I was, in 2008, I was on fires for 44 days straight. Ugh. And, um... And I was, you know, my crew and I were together the whole time. And it's hard to be around anybody for 44 days straight, 24 hours a day. And um, when I got done with that, I thought, oh, man, I need to go back to school and, you know, (laughs) get a higher degree and become a professor so I can be inside. And, um, you know, but once you get that overtime check from them fires. Yeah. You'd be like, well. Appreciate it. (laughs) You'd be like, well, maybe a professor's not mm-hmm. the profession for me. And then as you're leaving the fire and someone weighs you down and then, like, thanks you for saving their house they have for three generations and their family or their horses survived because of your efforts. Or, yeah. You know, you saved their childhood, you know, playground or whatever. You know, you feel good. And so yeah, it's that's got its benefit. Yeah, that, that's much better than being a, in a, a professor in the class because it takes a lot of studies and all that hard work to be inside teaching other people when they don't want to learn. I think I'd probably, Mm -hmm. if I had to do the two, you know, I'd not necessarily want to be a fire person, but I don't think I'd want to stand and teach a class because I had the opportunity to be a teacher and I turned it down because I was like, I (laughs) know, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Too much attitude, too much pressure. Uh -uh. The minute somebody say something, I'm going to be like, oh, my classroom. (laughs) Uh And I just can't do it. I can't do it. But yeah, my mom was a my mom was a teacher when she retired. She said, Woo. I said, Mom, you retired kind of young. And she goes, I retired just in time. That's what I'm saying. You got to still be young enough to get out and do other stuff because I've been retired five years and there's nothing like it. I didn't even realize I would be retiring at an early age. But it's like, I'm, whew, there's nothing like it. John and I both worked at the same place and he retired first and I came out after him and we're both just like, woohoo. You know, mm-hmm. there's nothing like it. Yeah, we started running like the dog who lets, you know, somebody let the gate open. You know, yeah, it was like, who let uh-huh. the dogs out? <laughs> <laughs> I think we danced right on up out of there, too. <laughs> oh, stay tuned for my dance when I retire. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, you still got some I time to go. I love my job, but I envy you guys for your um, just kind of freedom to make choices over your day. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah That's the fun thing is I don't have to do anything unless I want to. And and, uh-huh. and I was just telling the neighbor the other day, I said, she was like, yeah, I got to get up in the morning and hit it. I said, I don't. I said, I can be up all night, sleep all day. I can do whatever I want to. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, okay, rub it in. <laughs> uh-huh. But it's a choice. You know, I like to volunteer, but if I don't want to do anything, then I don't have to. I can lay on my sofa, watch soaps, and, you know, drink Diet Coke, whatever mm-hmm. I want to do. But Yeah, that so, is nice. So John's, John's going to play your, your video for uh, people that have not seen it, and they have to be under a rock not to have seen it. So he's gonna play this for us, and uh, okay. we go. I'm gonna dance while he does it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Laura, come here. Oh, here, Terry. Come here, come here. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, John. <laughs> get it, John. Get it. Get it. Woo! <laughs> Break it down. Ah! <laughs> I love that part because they just like, Whoa! <laughs> oh my goodness, my goodness, that is such a good mm-hmm. video. Well, anyways, John, I'm so glad that you took the time to talk to me today. And like I told you yesterday, I was really shocked that you answered back and said you'd do it because I just figured you were just like too busy now that you're a star. (laughs) No, I'm joking. (laughs) 
I, you know, I, I'm on vacation this week. You couldn't have See, you I, me at a better time. I mean, that was perfect when you said he was off the whole week. I was like, yes, I had to go and mm-hmm. do a special show because if we could have done it Tuesday had I checked my message. But usually when I get an email, it alerts me on my phone. There was no message. And then when I finally got around to looking at my laptop, I was like, oh, I missed it. Oh, no. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm, this I'm was a good day. I'm willing to talk about you know, youth programs and opportunities for youth and dancing. That's, that's, you know, you, you just, you just hit all the right points when you said you wanted to talk about that. I was like, Oh yeah, I can talk about that. Yeah. 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 It is great. It's great having you online and I am going to get in contact with the people that you had mentioned to me and maybe I can get an interview with them and, um, maybe they'll be dancing, you know, (laughs) They both dance, and you know Nicole Jackson is a wonderful, wonderful young upcoming leader mm-hmm. in the um, in the environmental education community. And same could be said about Ron Griswell. Yeah, and you will t- you will thoroughly enjoy talking with them, and your listeners will love hearing about what they're doing because it's just it's really inspiring. Well, that's both great. Of them are very inspiring. That's great. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to come on and um, just watching you dance and listen to you talk. I mean, you've told us a story from your history all the way up to now, and it's been very interesting <laughs> to me. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it because some people don't like to talk about stuff, but, you know, you talk like I talk. I mean, we can be still talking, you know, <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I, I want to thank you for coming on and, you know, like I said, we had a lot of fun today, didn't we, John? I like, sure did. It was, this was really a great, you know, chance to talk, hear you talk about what you're doing there, and also seeing the, the that, you know, the dance you guys are. I think that's. I think you're really touching a lot of bases. You know, you're you're impacting a lot of people, and I think that's. I think you got to You, I definitely can see where you're seeing. That's a rewarding career that you have. Yeah. Thank you, John. Yeah, it is. I feel we're very grateful for it. Yeah. So, I, um, so anyways, I want to thank you for coming on the line, and you have a great day, John, and I will talk to you soon on email if I need to get in contact with you about these other people and other opportunities. Okay, I know lots of other heroes, too, so if you ever are looking for people to interview, let me know, and it was very nice to talk to you, Lisa, and thank you, too, John. I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, have a good day. Right. Okay, so with us today, we had Mr. John Griffin, who I coin the dancing machine because <laughs> ever since I've seen that video I was just amazed that you know him dancing and the opportunities that he's given the youth out there with his program so for the people in the California area you know check into the California Conservation Corps and you can find him on Facebook John Griffith so in saying that it's Flaming Pit and we're out